So I want to talk a little bit about why a breach response or an incident response plan is such an important part of getting control of, uh, of uh, the cybersecurity um, situation. Um, but I want to start off with a, a few more general comments. Uh, first, no, I don't think there's any argument that technology makes our life easier. Every new, every new advance in technology is exciting and uh, amazing. And as we begin to understand how it's going to affect our lives and what it's going to do for us, what's going to let us do personally, what's going to let us do in business, what it's going to let us do uh, as, a, as a nation. This has been true since the Industrial Revolution, and no place has this, is this more true than in computing and communications. The first message that was sent on the telegraph in uh, May, of 19, uh, May of 1844, sorry, was from Samuel Morse in Washington, and he sent a, a, a message to a colleague in Baltimore, and it said, what hath God wrought? It's a quotation from the Bible. First phone call, Alexander Graham Bell, about 32 years later, was to his, uh, to his aide in a room next door, and it was, Mr. Watson, come here, I want to see you. And in uh, uh, October of 1969, a UCLA student named Charlie Klein sent a message to a programmer named Bill Duvall in the Stanford Research Institute, and it was the first message sent on the internet, and it was the word low, and low is an interjection that expresses amazement or calls attention to something. And it's remarkable that a college student could foresee the import of the internet and the huge impact it was going to have on our lives and our country and the way the world works. Um, of course, none of that's true. What actually happened was he was trying to type login, and the system crashed after two letters. So it was a little uh, taste of, uh, of things to come. And that highlights the downside of new technologies, and that is when they don't work the way that they're intended to work. Um, as computer networks have become a more essential part of, of our everyday lives and all the things that underpin our everyday lives, um, they've also become more vulnerable to the effects of their failure. And an increasingly important part of failure is a breach, a data breach, in which uh, important or sensitive uh, data from inside an organization is exposed to people outside the organization who shouldn't have access to it. Of course, uh, and in fact, we just talked about uh, security strategies in the, uh, in, the, in the last briefing, and every organization um, should have a, a, a cybersecurity strategy and a plan to protect its information from uh, disgruntled employees or from people uh, outside who are seeking to, uh, to get in and, uh, and get access to it, whether that's a criminal hacker who's looking to monetize the information or whether it's a, a, an APT, an advanced persistent threat, a, another nation state who's looking to get the information in order to advance their, uh, their agenda. Having a plan like that is necessary, uh, but it's not sufficient. You need to plan on what to do when your organization suffers a major hack. You need an incident response plan. Uh, why do you need that plan? Because if one of those APTs wants to get you and if they want to spend the time and the attention that it takes to do that, then they will get you. Um, and I used to actually run one of those APTs, and I can tell you that, in fact, that's, that's true. Um, the um, high-end uh, criminal actors are uh, approaching nation states in terms of their capability, in terms of the resources they have, in terms of the technical talent they have, in terms of their ability to gather information, and in terms of their ability to pay attention to you in ways that you don't want to be paid attention to. Um, last year's uh, WannaCry and NotPetya, respectively a ransomware attack and a destructive attack, uh, both of which uh, modified tools allegedly stolen from the U.S. government, are indicative of the caliber of the software that's out there. And so you need to plan for a breach. Okay, so, so you've got your strategy, you've got your breach plan, now what? You've, you've got a great incident response plan. It's well-crafted, um, it's got all the elements you would want to have. How do you detect a breach? Who do you tell? What mechanisms are in place uh, uh, to marshal the forces that you need in order to understand the, uh, the extent of the breach, to uh, notify your suppliers, your partners, your employees, the public, all those uh, different things? And what do you do to recover from the breach? Um, now, what do you do with it? Well, it turns out lots of organizations take that plan and they put it on a shelf and they show it to people when the board asks or when the regulators come by to ask or when something goes wrong and they take it off and dust it off and they, uh, and they um, use it. Um, if you're in the middle of a crisis, how many of you have, have had to deal with a crisis at work, some kind of an emergency? Show of hands. So 
the number one thing that people ask for in the middle of a crisis, the one, number one thing they want more of is time. And time is your enemy in a crisis. Uh, in a crisis caused by a breach, you've got information that's coming in from a lot of different sources, often conflicting information or incomplete information. Um, you have uh, to make decisions under very tight deadlines, uh, again, with, uh, with the uh, media breathing down your neck often in the case of uh, public uh, breaches. There will be internal and external entities that are pressuring you for information, whether that's um, your employees, whether that's your business partners, your suppliers, uh, your regulators if you're in a regulated industry. And of course the media. There will be competing demands to stop the loss of information, keep the network running, take the network down, take a thoughtful look at the data and analyze what went on so you can give a complete answer, put something out right now. All those things are competing for your attention all at the, all at the same time. Um, and it also, these, these things, these decisions that you make in this, uh, in this situation have a direct impact on things like your public reputation, your stock price, and in extreme cases, your job, uh, whether you're the CEO of the company or you're the, the CISO. Um, I've personally been through a large number of these sorts of things in my career, and I can tell you that um, time is uh, an unforgiving master uh, in these cases. So how do you get more time? How do you take control of the situation? Um, the answer is develop that incident response plan we talked about and then practice it, exercise it. And you exercise it not just by the people who are actually doing the work, the IT team and the security team, uh, but you exercise it with all the teams across the enterprise, then you exercise it at the management team level, and then you exercise it at the board level. And as you do that, and you involve each of the business units that are involved, um, and as you do that, uh, you get more efficient uh, in your actions, and it takes less time trying to decide or remember what to do. You actually are building a playbook by doing these exercises, and you're able to work your way through the playbook. And it frees up time because uh, there's a military adage, um, no plan survives contact with the enemy, and that's as true in uh, the cybersecurity business as it is on the battlefield. And so things are going to come up that you haven't foreseen, but if everything is something that you haven't foreseen and haven't practiced, then your time is going to be taken up with the things that you should have been able to foresee, and you're not going to have time to worry about the things that came up that you couldn't have foreseen. Um, so exercising the plan provides a number of important advantages. Management teams and boards are going to have time to deliberate on really difficult, uh, meaty issues that have to do with the future of the company or the future of the organization without having the pressure of an emergent situation sitting on their chest and forcing them to not be able to think through uh, things in a thoughtful, uh, thoughtful way. So by exercising, the, those resultant decisions are going to be uh, better planned and uh, more complete. Practicing the incident response plan using uh, different scenarios, as I mentioned, um, helps refine the plan and identify things that the plan didn't consider in the first place and lets you, again, develop responses or proactive actions to address those uh, particular issues. And I mentioned before about taking the lessons learned from that plan and building the playbook that then provides a roadmap for the people who have to execute. Um, conducting an exercise of the incident response plan allows business unit and corporate teams a chance to get to know one another. And that's really important. You don't want the first time your, your people, especially in larger organizations, you don't want the first time your people meet to be when the roof is caving in around their heads. You want them to have some kind of relationship that makes it easier to pick up the phone call or send them a note and get action moving quickly. They don't have to introduce themselves. They don't have to say, oh, you know, uh, you've already established the, the, um, the trust relationship, or at least the beginnings of a trust relationship that lets you execute uh, in the way that you need to. This also helps teams understand individual and unit's roles and responsibilities. Um, that's really important because if you don't understand what your lay in the road is or uh, as an individual or as an organization, then you're going to be less efficient in executing your plan in the middle of a breach. Um, the importance of this was, uh, uh, was driven home last year. and I did an exercise with a foreign government with uh, four teams of, uh, of uh, uh, combined government and industry people who were responding to a, a major breach. And one of the teams uh, got confused about what their role was and spent all of their time worrying about a particular legal issue uh, when, in fact, what they should have done was, uh, was 
punted that over to the legal team, let them work on it, and they needed to figure out what was going on in their network and what the adversary had done to them and what they could do about it. Um, an exercise is also a chance for the organization's response leads to meet with their counterparts in external organizations. So think about you know, reaching out to law enforcement, reaching out to your local uh, FBI cyber unit chief, uh, reaching out to um, regulators, reaching out to key customer groups or key suppliers or key business partners in advance of an actual breach. Again, establish that contact, have that communication channel open. It's probably too much to hope that they would participate in your exercise and actually you might not want them to participate in your exercise because you want to have a free and open uh, internal uh, um, uh, conversation about what's going on. But having that, um, that outreach, that ability to um, to identify and contact those indiv individuals while you're not under that crushing weight of an emergency is, is really important. It'll pay, dividend, it'll pay dividends in the event of an actual breach. Um, an exercise, or better yet, multiple exercise of different scenarios uh, provides an opportunity for the management team and the legal and compliance staff to fully understand the complexities of um, involved in disclosure requirements. Many organizations reside in multiple jurisdictions, and if you do, you know that the rules around breaches and disclosures are different from jurisdiction to jurisdiction, and so the answer in where your headquarters is may be different than the answer required where one of your field offices is, and so having an exercise lets you step through that in a careful, thoughtful way and organize your responses so that if and when there is a breach, you're able to, uh, to respond. This is especially important in heavily regulated industries, finance, health, um, maybe social media someday, the way things are going with Congress, who knows. Uh, but the, the, um, the understanding ahead of time of what those requirements are um, lets you review actions in advance and make sure that the secondary and the tertiary consequences are considered by the management team and the board in order to not have unpleasant surprises at the end. Um, communications, both internal and external, are obviously a critical part of a breach response plan, uh, and exercising that gives the organization a chance to um, develop principles and guidelines for communicating that help the communicators accurately portray what the entity, the organization or the corporation wants to convey in terms of their values, their principles, their mores, the way that they approach things, the way that they value customers, the way that they value uh, customers' data, um, their sense of responsibility to stockholders, their sense of responsibility to their employees, um, and it also helps instill confidence in their ability, uh, confidence in uh, people's understanding of the corporation's ability to act responsibly. Legal staff also has time to review actions and any public or internal statements for consistency and appropriateness. Again, these are the sorts of things you want to do in a fairly leisurely way, not uh, necessarily uh, have to review everything when you're in the middle of a, of a crisis. Communications are so important and they color how the public, investors, and customers view you and your actions. If you think about recent breaches, think about the Equifax brief, uh, breach. Think how different that would have come out had they planned and exercised their response ahead of time as opposed to doing things on the fly, which, which was obviously what they were doing. So uh, is practice really that important? Well, uh, think about the US military. US military is the best in the world. They're the best in the world for three reasons. They have the best people. They have amazingly smart and dedicated people who do the work. They have the best technology. Um, and although that edge is, is shrinking, it still is the best technology. And they exercise. And they exercise all the time on all the things that they're going to be called upon to do, whether that's humanitarian assistance missions or combat and everything in between there. They practice and they practice and they practice so that when the crisis does hit and it becomes time to execute, um, they are extraordinarily efficient in their use of time and the protection of that critical resource that you never have enough of. So take a page from their book and uh, exercise your, your response plan. I said earlier that technology makes our lives better, and that's true, but the misuse of the technology can cause serious problems, and nowhere is that more true than in cybersecurity incidents and uh, data breaches. Events like these will put an incredible amount of stress 
on organizations and people to respond quickly and correctly. And until someone invents the technology for time travel, the best way you're going to capture time as a resource is to practice, practice, and practice. <laughs>